hello hello everybody welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new i've got three more summertime crock pot recipes let's get to cooking We're going to go ahead and start off with Italian chicken pasta. This is a family favorite and it's so easy to put together. So I'm going to go ahead and put a couple chicken tenders in the bottom of my crock pot. I'm just doing enough tenders to equal about three to four chicken breasts. Tenders is just what I had on hand, so I went ahead and just pulled it out and used it. And it is totally safe to put frozen chicken in your crock pot, I promise. I've been doing it for years. It's totally safe and I have not gave anybody food poison or killed anybody. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to go ahead and add on a packet of dry Italian and then you're going to add on your cream of chicken soup and I just kind of dump it in there and then just spread it over top of the chicken and then you're going to add one block of cream cheese and just put it right on top don't worry about cutting it up or anything because as it cooks it's just going to kind of you know heat through and melt and then it can just mix all in when you go to shred your chicken. I'm going to put the lid on this and let it cook for about six hours. Here's what it looks like when it is all done. And then I just take my meat masher and just kind of chop it up. The chicken falls right apart. It's super tender and delicious. And then I have my pasta cooking over on the stove top and then we will just add that right into the crock pot and mix everything together. Like I said, this one is so easy to put together and it is so delicious. And then you're just going to mix it all together. If it looks a little dry, you can either add another can of cream of chicken soup or you can add in some of that pasta water. That nice starchy pasta water is going to kind of help bring it all together. But here's what it looks like when it is all done. And then I served it up with some homemade easy cheddar bay biscuits. And I'll have that recipe linked down below for you guys. Next up, we're going to do some homemade sloppy joes in the crock pot. This one is also really easy and I like to do this. I like to go ahead and cook my meat in the morning or even that night before. That way I don't heat my house up, even just cooking the ground beef. So I do it really early in the morning and then I go ahead and add it into my crock pot and get everything going and it just simmers and marries together all day. So. I am going to go ahead and cook up. I have got three pounds of hamburger meat there. I did extra because I wanted to be able to put some in the freezer that was already cooked up. Of course, season your hamburger meat but whenever you're cooking it up. And since mine was frozen, I did add in, add in some water just to kind of help it steam and get it cooking. Now that my meat is all browned up, I'm going to go ahead and add it into my crock pot. Now, I'm going to be honest, this one I don't have a strict recipe for. The next time I make it, I am going to do better at measuring, so that way I can type this out for you guys, um, because I know a lot of people, you know, like to have the typed out recipe, so I do apologize for me not having this. This is just one of these recipes that I just add stuff to, and I taste it, and just kind of see where what I, what I think it needs. So I do have a big can. It was like one of the 28 ounce cans of tomato sauce. I added that in there, the whole thing. And then I'm gonna add in about a half a cup of brown sugar. I, we personally like ours a little sweeter, but that's something that you can add a little, you know, a little of or a lot of. Like I said, this is just one of these recipes that I just kind of eyeball and it's just kind of based off your family's taste. I'm also going to add in some mustard and some ketchup and then we're going to go in with our seasonings. I'm going to add in a few dashes of W sauce. Some chili powder. Some garlic powder. some paprika,
some onion powder, and some salt and some pepper. Now this is one too that if your family likes peppers and onions, you could easily go ahead and add in some peppers and onions while you're cooking your ground beef and add it in. Normally I do a little bit of onion, but I was in a hurry and I just needed to get, get it going. Um, you can also do like minced onion if you have it or add in some frozen onion. Like I said, this is just one of these recipes for me personally that it's just I add a little bit and taste it and just kind of see because I know what my family likes, but for me it's based off taste. I did add in a little splash of vinegar and I added in about a fourth of a cup of water. I'm going to go ahead and get everything a good stir and then just put the lid on it and let it cook on low for about six to eight hours. You're just marrying all the seasonings together and just kind of thickening it up. about halfway through cooking time I did check on it stir it and I did like a little re-seasoning I added in some more brown sugar and all of the seasonings that you've seen before I just added a little bit extra but here's what it looks like it was so good and we were busy this night so this is all we had I didn't fix any sides or anything this was dinner <laughs> I saved my personal favorite for last y'all this one was so good this was a new to me recipe and it is a must try everybody loved it so I've got about two and a half pounds of a choke roast there that I have just cubed up and then I'm gonna add in two cans of golden mushroom soup the golden mushroom has a tomato base to it and I don't I've I've never used the golden mushroom in with beef stroganoff. I've always just used regular cream of mushroom. And I don't know, but it, it I'm telling y'all, y'all have to try this recipe. It was so good. I'm going to add in some W sauce as well as some uh, salt and some pepper. And then we're going to add in one onion that I finally chopped up in my chopper. It called for some broth I just added in water and then I'm gonna add in my bouillon flavoring y'all know I always keep that on hand it's super easy and it's a great way to add in some extra flavor to recipes and then we're just gonna take and mix that all together and cover it and let it cook low and slow for about 8 to 10 hours remember even with this roast being cut up it's still a roast and if you want it to be fall apart tender cook it low and slow Here's what it looks like when the meat is all done. Y'all, it was so tender and it was just falling apart. I'm gonna add in some room temperature cream cheese as well as some room temperature sour cream. Now I'm just gonna put it in there, put the lid on it and let it sit for a couple minutes to help it come to temp with what is in the crock pot. That way it doesn't curdle. So just put it in there, cover it, give it a second and then come back and stir it in and it will be smooth. Now a beef stroganoff normally has mushrooms and I had bought actually fresh mushrooms to make with this. When I got them out of the fridge and cut them up, they were slimy and nasty. So luckily I had one lonely can of mushrooms in my pantry. This is something I'm gonna put in my stock now. Um, but that's all I had to add in. So I did add that little can in. <laughs> But I'm just going to mix everything together. I do have my noodles cooking up on the stovetop. And then we are just going to get those cooked up and add those in. I 
I did end up adding that whole bag of egg noodles and I'm just gonna mix it in now as you can see it is a little soupy but I wanted to give it about 15 to 30 minutes to let it sit in the crock pot to see if any of that liquid soaked in to the noodles and it did it did soak up a little bit I did have to add only about a fourth of a cup of a cornstarch slurry though just to kind of thicken it up to our liking and that made it perfect so I would say let it sit for about 10 to 15 minutes give it a little time to kind of soak into the noodles and see if you think you feel like it needs a cornstarch slurry I served it with a couple cans of corn and some homemade garlic butter rolls. I will be sharing this in an upcoming video in a couple weeks, so y'all stay tuned for that. But dinner was delicious. I'm telling y'all, this was a new to me recipe and I highly recommend. That's it guys, that wraps up today's video. I really hope you enjoyed these super easy and delicious crock pot recipes. Using your crock pot is the perfect way to feed your family and keep your house cool for the summer season. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.